Welcome to Inside the Life with Steve Daniels. We have an amazing show tonight. We have so many great guests tonight. But before we start, I want to welcome everybody back. And remember, once again, if you dream, dream out loud. We have our first guest tonight from Mexico's Next Top Model, Joe Lance. Right. Hey, Joe. How are you doing? I was like I screwed that up one up a little bit. That's okay. How are you doing? Okay. Fantastic. It's great to see you. Yeah, great. Nice to see you too. How's everything been since I seen you last? Oh my God, amazing. I, I just got back to New York. It's kind of weird how like the world comes. You know, I wound up coming to New York to film a TV show for VH1. Okay. I uh, just filmed uh, Mob Wives, which was amazing. So Mob much. Wives. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Joe Lance was on Mob Wives. Yeah, I was there as a one fashionista during a fashion show, but uh, the other show that I just filmed off is called Style by June that airs March 16th. Okay. June is the stylist for X Factor, Jay-Z, Beyonce, you name it. Okay. Uh, I can't say the name of the celebrity I just worked with, but one of the biggest legends I just photographed on the show. Okay. Which my episode airs March, I'm sorry, uh, April 16th, and you know how New York is. As soon as I got in town, Fashion Week started, getting invitations to go to every show, every event, and... Three weeks later, I'm in New York, and I'm like, wait a minute, I just came here for like two days, and so yeah. So, I mean, so it's been a whirlwind. It's great, yeah, it's been really, really good, you know, and just getting ready to film season three, you know, as far as the show, and you know. Sure. With so before we even get into that, um, what were the highlights of Fashion Week? Was there anything uh, that really stuck out? Any parties that uh, really stuck out? And. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know what, I, I was okay. I, you know... You know how it is. Uh, I've, I've lived in New York for 25 years, right. and when you travel around so much around the world, and every party, I guess age also, you know, everything you start getting bored, I'm like, ah, oh, boring, ah, oh, another party. Uh, I told my friends, I'm like, I'm champagned out. I love champagne. And after a while, I'm like, really? You want to feed me champagne for free all night? I'm like, doesn't excite me. You know, you go to like some of the most amazing parties, you're like, oh, that sucked. <laughs> That's boring. You right, know, right, right, right. You know, right. I just want to rather be home sleeping. Right, right, right. Sorry, I'd rather be home sleeping, get in my energy, get ready for the next night, for right. the next job, you know. Sure, I, sure. I think my early 20s was great. I was wild, out of control in New York. So now it's like, I go to the party, I shake hands, hi, good to see you, before anybody gets drunk and obnoxious and it doesn't make sense, or remember your name. You know, I'm like, hi, nice to meet you, nice to meet you too, I'll see you later, bye. Right, you right, know? the whole... Oh, yeah, yeah. And the worst right. part is, I walk out like with a hundred business cards. I get mobbed by people. Everyone's like, "Here, have my car, have my car, have my car." And you're just like, "Actually, you still have the card I gave you, right?" <laughs> yes, I do. And I fold, you know, in my little trick, I fold them in half. Okay, that's that's the how whole, I remember that's people how you like the important ones from the national. They do, part. and sometimes they, they they get offended and they look at me because I fold that in front of them, and they'll go, oh. "I said, no, no, I said, I said that means you're special." Well, that's what you told me backstage. You know? I gave you a card, you folded it. I said. And you said, how oh, special. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, hey. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so tell us how the whole uh, Mexico's Top Model happened. How, how did that process even begin? How did you get picked for it? How did that whole process begin? Well, that happened. Um, I've been a photographer all my life. Well, we're going to touch on that as well, too. But. And at the time, I got to live in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. We're talking like many years ago. Okay. And I was the first guy to be on TV. I used to have like fluorescent green hair. Uh, like no. Fire red hair. No. You? Yeah. No. And, you know, and we're talking like 20 years ago oh, for wow. Latin America. I mean, yeah, it's like, right. And this is before any celebrity in Latin America did that on TV. Sure. So I was like the first guy being interviewed as a fashion photographer. So they, they remember from 20 years ago some crazy guy with green hair and, the, you know, right. they had the balls to do these crazy sure. things. And they needed a character for the TV show. Mm hmm. And they contacted me here in New York, and they said we would like you to come and audition. Okay. And I auditioned for the show. They tortured me. I had to go like five different times, back and again and again. Right. You know, and every time I kept on dressing up louder and louder. <laughs> every time I showed up, you know, and there were, sure. you know, and, and I got the show, which was wonderful. And it's been a great experience being on the show, mm -hmm. which is very nice. I love the fans. People are so sweet and now so nice. Now you're going to the third season, correct? Yes. Now tell me about the judges and. Uh, we touch on maybe there's a little more competition with the judges than there are with the contestants a little bit, right? Well, I, I guess, you know, it's like the contestants, we see them from far away. Right. You know, and, and you know, so it's never really, you know, but I think like with the judges sometimes it's like they picked it as all differently with different personalities. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm the crazy guy. 
<laughs> I'm like, no. Wild. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Like, today I dressed actually normal for you, you know? And I was like, like I mentioned, I was going to wear that hat today, so I'm glad I didn't. Sure. We, we could have been like the twins. Exactly. We were like the Wonder yeah. Twins. Exactly. <laughs> no, but yeah, I'm sorry. But yeah, you know, it, it's fun. Now, now second season, you know, was great because it was kind of like the first season, you were still trying to figure out like Who's who, who we are, what we do, you know, and, you know, so you kind of saw the, the tension between us. And the great thing was that, like, season two was amazing. It was kind of like coming back home. You know, when you're coming back home, you're like, hey, everybody's hugging and kissing. And it was great. And it just seemed so much more relaxed. But I think the first season is was just because, you know, we're still all trying to get, it, sure. get to know each other. But, yeah, it's been an amazing experience. I how, how are the models out there? I, I, I mean, are they comparable to here? Or are they, is it, you know, they look for something different out there in America as they do in Mexico? I mean... What are the comparisons? I mean, uh, well, I guess we always look for someone that's got potential, right? That's going to represent the show worldwide. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of beautiful girls. A lot of beautiful girls. It's kind of funny because as Mexicans here in the U.S., they all think we're short, fat, and ugly. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, it's true. I'm a Mexican. People are like, oh my god, you're a Mexican. I'm like, what? Are we supposed to be all short, fat, and ugly? You know, and it's interesting because they see the supermodel and it's amazing to see her. This girl's like 5'11", heels, she's 6'4", and right. I just laugh when men see her, you know. The men are like, and I'm like, yes, honey, it's okay. She's a Mexican and she's not short or fat, you know. And, right. we, and some of the girls on our TV show are dropped and gorgeous. Right, right. And it's interesting because, you know, it's always kind of frustrating when they're like, but they don't look Mexican. I'm like, God, what's wrong with you people? Like, you know, here in New York, we get all the people that come from the South that are more that stereotype that they think short, dark, and stocky. And, and, and they drink a lot. <laughs> and they drink a lot. No. I, I guess. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> most of you here in New York, I don't have that many Mexican right, friends. Right, or right, like right. Puerto Rican, Dominicans, or mm. any other country except right. Mexico. Right. Unless right. you go to Queens. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? right, right, right. But yeah, no, it's like, we got a lot of beautiful girls, and we always look for someone, I guess personally, because we all look for something different. Mm -hmm. And to me, being in this industry, I don't cater to people's ego. Sure. At the end of the day, it's about having someone that you could turn into a supermodel, mm -hmm. someone that's got the potential and that knows how to present themselves, someone that's going to be a trooper that you could work 15 hours without complaining. Sure. You know, they don't feed you well too bad, honey. Right. Sorry. You should be eating anyway. <laughs> yeah, you should be eating. Yeah, you're a model. Stay. <laughs> stay stay. Like, ah. Yeah. Right. But uh, so what? what's like the funny? Do you have any funny stories that stand out that behind the scenes that happened on the show that you'd like to share with the audience? Yeah, well... Um, I do a lot of crazy things, just spontaneously, like, I just wanted to do a lot of silly things, you know, like, everyone has their character, and this season I decided to just do all kinds of silly things, like, you know, just to provoke all the other judges, right. to throw them off guard, so I thought it would be kind of interesting, because at the end of the day, no one knows what we're going to be doing, uh -huh. so on second season, I did, like, stupid things, like, the whole time of the episode, I'm just filing my nails. Oh, really? Kind of like saying, like, I will scratch your eyes out, you know, right, kind right, of thing. Right, right, right. Uh, and another one, I'm just, like, pretending I'm reading a crystal ball the whole time. And another one, I'm pretending I'm, like, writing in my diary. Instead of looking at the judges, I would just talk to a book like a crazy man, like right. what I was dreaming and thinking. And I would do all kinds of strange things. And the funny part is to see the judges, right. because we all show up at work like, hi, we're here, we're all okay, we're going to judge. Right, and right. then here's, like, and then there's Joe. <laughs> you know? right, right. And it's funny, like, they're sitting down, and you see all the other the judges I was kind of like look over here like oh my god like what did he just do and you see them laughing big, but they're so serious they're right. trying to be all like right. and they're like <laughs> and you're right. like oh I made you laugh and you see all oh, everyone laughing and the producers and the directors everyone's laughing and all the models can't stop laughing when I do all kinds of like crazy things and they're just like oh my god like you're so wild. And the nice thing is that I get great support from the producers and the directors and they're almost like, do whatever you do. Like, you know, right, right, right. which is nice. So yeah, it's almost a lot, a lot of fun. So it looks like you're having a good time on that show. Oh yeah, great time. Awesome. Now, I also want to touch on some of your photography. Yes. Now, that's that was your passion. That was everything that you're about. Yes. yes. When did you get into photography? And Well, I started since I was eight years old. But did you know right away when you... When you, I guess, took you just got a camera in your hands, did you know right away this is this is it? This is going to be my passion, yeah. or you did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the strange thing is that I was raised in a farm in the middle of nowhere. Like, so you shot cows and 
Uh, well, uh, yeah, I played with all the animals. My job was to feed the animals when we lived on the farm, and you know, I had like one friend, which was this dog that would just follow me around, you know, and look at the mountains, and it was so weird, like the movie The Secret, that people talk about The Secret, it became such a big movie, and mm -hmm. so when the movie came out, I was like, wait a minute, that's me. Since I was eight years old, you know, I was taking photographs, and people would all laugh at me and tease me, and I was like, whatever, I kept on clicking. Now, did your parents support? Oh, never. <laughs> well, that, Sorry. That's always never. A, no, that's the answer I look for every week. Yeah. And I, you know, many artists I sit here and I'm like, hey, did your parents? Oh, sure, my parents love. The truth is, right, when you go to your parents and say, I want to be a photographer, what do they say? They said only gay guys are. <laughs> only gay men were photographers. I'm like, well, fuck this, count me in then. <laughs> you know, it's like, it was so funny. They're old school Mexican. Wait, you're gay? I guess depending what, what, <laughs> what, what day, what day it is, right? Oh, no, you know, yeah, no. I was happy. Gay. Yeah, sure, exactly. Yeah. But no, so okay, so so you, you you went to your parents, you told them, and uh, at what point me. what point did they say, "Wow, you might have something here, Joe"? You know, I guess finally when they saw me in some magazine with a really famous Latin celebrity. But the sad part was that I had been working in Hollywood for years, you know, doing stills in movies, mm -hmm. and I had you know been around like all these big famous celebrities. You know, in the U.S., and my parents, you know, being so Latin, they were, like, so clueless. Right. That, that they were so big in the U.S. because all they watched was Spanish TV. Uh -huh. You know, so it was really frustrating. You're working for all these years. You're like, wow, I did this movie. I worked on this. And they just had no idea. No and finally, you saw some Latin celebrity in a magazine, like, 10 years later that I'm already been working in the U.S. And they see me in some little, like, cheesy, kind of like a, like, people magazine type of magazine, but a Latin version. You know, and people, they people's not cheesy though. No, we love not, people. No, 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 not cheesy. People no, we're just saying about you know, we're just like, throwing it out there. Please. Exactly. You know, just like those gossip magazines. You know, people. Magazines. Not cheesy though. Not cheesy. No, I should just to say that. I, I, I was very. Close. No, I'm kidding. And I have a little story about people too. Uh, it's good. <laughs> right. No, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, it was one of those things. I figured, you know what? I'm just gonna do what I feel, and I started following my heart. I've mm -hmm. never stopped. And it's gotten to me where I'm at now. And it's interesting because I've I read a lot of spiritual books, from whether it's spiritual books or even Donald Trump, which I admire him, and so many different business people. They always say, you got to love what you do. Sure. Whenever you follow your heart, things will happen. And sure enough, you know, I noticed that when my mom died, I'm like, Ooh, I kind of like felt more free, like I could be wilder with my art. And then my dad just passed like a month ago, you know, and it was one of those I'm things. I'm sorry like, to hear that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you know, they're gone. You know, so, so actually my family thought I was crazy. They're, they're all dead. I'm like, yes, I'm free. And, my, and they're, they're looking at me like, you got to be kidding me. You're so wild already. You're so out there. I'm like, oh no. I'm like, I was holding back. I'm like, you were holding back. I'm like, oh yeah, it's not. I have nobody. Like, I don't care about what my brothers and sisters think. Right, right, I don't right, worry right. about mom and dad. But now that they're gone, I'm like, I really feel that that true artist is coming out even more. Right. Well, that I mean, do you attribute that now? I mean, to all the stuff that you're doing now. I mean, it all you think it all coincides. I know you're talking about following signs and all that yeah. stuff. So yes, yeah, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, I've been very involved, like in a long spiritual journey, and the journey that has taken me now. And I'm pretty much using my career just so it could help the world. Wow. I mean, if I didn't have that mission, I think I wouldn't care about being on TV or what I do. But I think it's a gift from God and the universe. Mm -hmm. So uh, to me, the way I see it is that the more I succeed, the more I'm going to help the world. Right. You know, the more I could help the world. And I've been doing a lot of charity work for the past year. I've done, I've helped so many people from like cancer, AIDS, battered women, all kinds of shelters, you know, mm -hmm. from abused kids to like abused animals. Because I figured, you know what? God gave me a gift. I'm just going to reach as many people as possible and help as anybody that needs help. Charity, I'm always like, I'll help. Wow. Wow. You know, and I love helping, you know, and I think that's my purpose in life to come out here and be able to spread preach that. and spread the word, you know, and help people. And Wow, that's amazing. Very, but we're getting very deep here, Joe. Yeah, right. Then. So, yeah, it's, there's this, this yin and yang thing kind of, you know, there's like this like super like, hi, I want to save the world. And then there's this guy dressed up in feathers and Swarovski crystals. You know? I always hope you were going to come out in feathers today, to be honest. I thought yeah. maybe... I, that would have been great, but I actually have another big event right now for people with a VH1 so they want to show up like, da, 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 da. they're like, you. okay, the clouds just arrived. I You're mean. like, no, I'm not here to perform. I'm a guest. I yeah. Mean, I mean. So before we let you go, um, you know, with all the charities and everything you got going on, how, 
How can the world follow you? Is there any websites or any, any way we could follow you? Uh, we have 30, 40,000 people watching. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we follow you and what you're doing? Well, uh, they could see it on um, www.jolancephoto.com. And okay. that's just J O L A N C E P H O T O dot com. Mm -hmm. Or Joe Lance Photo on Twitter, Facebook, Joe Lance, same thing. Okay. You know, they could see my work and, you know, see all the wild creative things that we're doing. And if you want to see the TV show for Top Model, you could go on YouTube. For Mexico Next Top Model on YouTube, you'll see, you know, a lot of the show there as well. Okay. But yeah, but, you know, well, thank you so much. No, I didn't. Know. <laughs> you got to do me one favor. Yes. I promise you're going to come back again. I promise. And your busy schedule, you're going to fit us back in. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, let's get up for Joe Lance.
Welcome back to Inside the Life with Steve Stanulis. Once again, I'd like to thank my first guest. He was, he's always a character. He's awesome. We've got to have him back real soon. But we're going to bring out our next guest right now. She's singing a great song right now. She's singing, My Ex-Boyfriend is Gay. Let's get up. Yes, I said it. I'll say it again one more time. My Ex-Boyfriend is Gay. Let's hear it for the one, the only, Kaylee Rose. Here we go. Are you ready, Kaylee? Yeah, I'm ready. My ex-boyfriend's gay, really? My ex-boyfriend's gay, yeah. Let's, let's, let's say it. Good thing. <laughs> Well, how, what, 
I, I'm afraid to ask what inspired you to write that, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I have to go there. I mean, it's... No, I mean, it was, uh, I was having trouble falling asleep, and it was like 2 a.m. I remember the moment lying in bed, and I thought, this song needs now, to Now, was there some mushrooms involved? No. no I'm kidding. I'm funny joke. joke. I'm kidding. Um, no, I just remember thinking this song needs to exist, because it's a story that so many girls have. So it's not a personal story? It is a personal oh, story. Oh, it is a personal story. Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. But I was like, something okay. that I was afraid to admit. You know, because okay. I thought that, you know, boyfriends would judge me and think that maybe I was the one who turned him gay and perceive me in some negative way that I right. didn't want, you right. know? Right. But it's amazing. And he's my gay best friend now and life is good, you know? Really? Yeah. So there's no, like, no weirdness, no, it's just kind no. of just transitions to best friend. Absolutely. Why yeah. are gay men always best friends of women? I mean, I, because they're great. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Quite it's frankly. True. It's true. Now, so, so you're laying in bed. Let me just bring yeah. back the moment. You're laying in bed. Sure. And you said, okay, um, I got to write a song mm. about my relationship, about my ex-boyfriend being gay. Absolutely. And, and there it was. it to life. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a really catchy song. And thank you. <laughs> maybe we should patent it. Maybe get some shirts and... Patent it. I like it. Right? Buttons. Buttons? Maybe it can be a revolution. Maybe we can wear a hat like Joe had. <laughs> maybe just like, I love that <laughs> hat. I want that hat. I know. Joe, Joe had to kind of run out of here quick, but I I would have, we would have had a little fun with that. I know. It matches me, too. What exactly. about perfect? Exactly. But, so what's been, what's been going on? Um, we shot the music video last weekend, or day one, and then we're going to continue now, what, shooting it. Now, what was the pro I mean, how did you... <laughs> <laughs> hey, again. It's kind of in the Lonely Island style of videos okay. um, at SNL, Andy Samberg oh, okay. group. So it's sure. hysterical, but it's not like what you would expect. Okay. You know, like they had shots where you would pan, and then the humor would be at the end of the pan, and... It, I'm very, very excited about it. It's gonna look great. Yeah. So yeah. That's cool. Now, what, 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 like, uh, when did you start singing? What kind of inspired you to sing? And um, like, ever did you know this is something you wanted to breathe. do? Yeah. Really? And then, yeah. And then my family probably, um, I guess, it occurred to them that maybe it was a good thing for me to take lessons. So I started studying privately at age eight. But first, I did opera for years and years and years. Opera. Yeah. Wow. Now. Yeah. Did they like support again? I, I asked every artist. No, have. I know. Did you get the support? Was I it did. kind of like you do it on your own? Oh, so okay, so they totally support. I it. did. I mean, and I actually I've been in the city for years because I went to Columbia. So I think maybe they thought somewhere throughout that I might have changed, but it's always been a passion. And well, now how did you transition? How did you transition from opera? To sing my my boyfriend's gay. <laughs> we go from one extreme to the well, other. Well, I've always loved pop music, and that you know, I have memories of my mom and I singing to Whitney Houston in the car and Anita Baker. So that was like my secret love while I was doing these operas and musical theater. It was like a dirty little secret in the opera and musical a lot of theater secrets. world. A yeah. lot of secrets. <laughs> now, who inspired you as a kid? Uh, Whitney Houston, like I said, Anita Baker, and Tony Braxton. Those are like my three girls. Right. I Absolutely. mean, they're all great. Yeah. I mean, we lost we lost Whitney, uh, but I know that's a whole other story. It is. So now, also, you're working on a couple other things. I, w I was told. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell, do tell. Gosh, everything going on. I'm doing hosting um, for a few websites. Tell us, tell us so about that. So you can see that. Um, I host for a new website. It's called Local Joey in Hoboken, and Local, Local Joey, Joey like in hey, Hoboken. Joey. And like Joey the kangaroo. <laughs> oh, that's cool. So yeah, I do that, um, and I do films, and yeah, yeah, a lot fun. of voiceover. Now, do you like? Um, I mean, if in a perfect world, if you can win a Grammy or an Oscar, what would it be? Grammy. Really? Yeah. So music is the number one passion. Yeah, and I mean, I there were a few years where I kind of forgot and like wondered why I was so unhappy, and I was right. doing film and I was doing theater, and it was great, but there was something missing, and I finally was like, you haven't been exposed in singing and music so yeah. then I got into voiceover um, and I've been doing that and okay. loving it right. so yeah okay. I rediscovered that I need to be in the recording studio and well, I need to be in that environment that's what we always run into when, every time I see uh, an artist you know was a musician first mm -hmm. and then an artist versus first singing that go to acting yeah they kind of lose track of you know when they're being on the set for 12 hours and it's uh. kind of it becomes tedious and then they sing live in front of a live studio audience mm -hmm. and it's just like a whole other world. The world opens up. Yeah. yeah, it totally opens up. I mean, you get that whole adrenaline rush and the whole nine yards, right? Absolutely. And I, I mean, I was doing musical theater. I was a happy kid, but still, there was. What was your favorite musical it. theater play? Was there anyone's? Oh my gosh! Um, in high school, we did Les Mis. Les Mis. <laughs> that wow. was like the epic. Wow. Thing, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you did you? Like I said, when you once you were singing, you went to the theater. Did you want to do Broadway? Did you want to? 
That yeah. was the dream. That's why I came to New York, you know? Um, and then I kind of figured out that the people were getting cast in roles that I would get, because I'm not like a tiny little blonde thing, you know? So I graduated from college and like, no one really knew where to put me. Um, right. And so then I kind of figured out that the people that were getting cast in the roles that I would get cast in were already building up their film and television careers. Sure. Sure. And already names in that world. So then I exposed myself to that and learned that craft for a while. And that's why music kind of fell by the wayside and it was a scary time. Yeah, right. It's yeah. devastating, I would imagine. Right? I tell you. So then, what happened? Now, are you single now, or I have a boyfriend, and he's he not gay. He knows. He's probably not gay. Yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's watching right now. And so, hopefully, <laughs> so is the guy that we wrote the song about. I hope so. I know. I uh, I'm available if you. <laughs> no, no, but my boyfriend jokes that he can never. It's one more reason never to break up with me because then everyone will think it's him. Everybody thinks right. Yeah, that's true. Because then he will be an ex-boyfriend. It's true. Now, how many songs do you have uh, recorded now? I mean, EP, we have five. five. Yeah. Five, okay. Over Analytical, 8th Avenue, Bad Girl Next Door, and Daddy Complex. So they all have like a humor aspect to them. Now, are they all like. personally? Oh, yeah. <laughs> from the heart, yes? Yeah, absolutely. So I think tell you me about the daddy, daddy song. You know. well, the daddy, daddy song. complex. The daddy complex. Is also a thing I think every girl kind of has, you know, whether you have a good relationship with your dad, a sure. you know, mediocre one, um, it affects your relationship with men, absolutely. So Yeah, yeah I mean, uh I I mean do you I know a lot of people complex? I do have a daddy complex. <laughs> I actually do. Yeah? Yeah, I actually do. I, I mean my dad, God bless him, he's, my dad's eighty five. Oh my goodness. Hit me later in life, but I still Hi. hey dad. <laughs> He's definitely watching, but Aww. but the thing is, when you watch, you know, I still like if he yells at me, I get like, oh yeah, you know, even today, oh yeah, I mean, you know, and he's just hanging, you know, he's with a cane and everything, but still, Aww. he yells at me over the macaroni. <laughs> still scared. I'm still scared. Right? I still like, sorry, dad, you know. So yeah, totally, daddy complex. But Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah. So how can everybody find you? I mean, if if they want to see what you're doing, listen. Can they download the music? Yeah, oh. it's on iTunes, Kaylee Rose, and that's C A L E Y Rose is in the flower. Um, or you can go to my website, KayleeRose.com. I'm on Facebook, Kaylee Rose Music, and Twitter, Kaylee Rose. Now, Kaylee, would you mind hanging out for a while? Of course not. Do you have a song for us a little while? Surely, yeah. We're going to have another guest, if you mind uh, co hosting with me for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah? I'll sit with you, yeah. Awesome. I love it. Thank you. Ladies okay. and gentlemen, let's hear one more time for Kaylee Rose. Thank you.
We are back with Inside the Life with Steve Stanius. Once again, I'm Steve Stanius. We're going to bring our next guest right now. Let's hear it for the one, the only, Mr. Jimmy Hook. Jimmy, good to see you again. How's everything? Good to see you again. How's everything? Oh, pretty well. Can't complain. How's the club business, Jim? Well, it consumes me. It consumes it's, you. It's uh, very busy, but uh, it does have its perks. Oh, it's a lot of work. But, um, it's a uh, it's, uh, work in progress. Work in progress. Now, it's uh, Arena. Yes, that is correct. Sports club. Arena, Queens, New York. In Queens. What part of Queens? Um, it's 80-12, 51st Avenue. Okay. On the corner of 51st Avenue and Queens Boulevard. Mm -hmm. uh, right in the heart of Elmhurst. Elmhurst. And, um, Elmhurst. Elmhurst, New York. And um, what we're doing is we're bringing back the rock scene. Okay. More or less, if you recall, the Moors from back sure. in the day. That was a cool rock scene. I think over the last 15 to 20 years, people kind of lost the rock thing. Now he's not, you know, there's a little singing here. There's a little, uh, my, ex, my, rocks, my ex boyfriend's so. gay. <laughs> Got some Ace Freely boots on his shoes right there. Maybe, maybe, maybe we, we have, have a potential. A for you. Maybe we have a potential. Uh, <laughs> I get 10%. But anyway, no. Absolutely. I'm just kidding. I get 20, nice. Yeah, nice. Hey. There you go. Everybody's got to be happy, you know. You know it's got to be a win 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 here. Right. So, 20% um, means I get 80, so that's not that bad. Well, no, she would get the 80. Do I get anything? Well, you get to have a perform. That's fair enough. I'll take that. All right. My ex boyfriend's gay. I mean, yeah. That's not every day. You, you, with that, you win. <laughs> <laughs> that takes so, the cake. So, now tell us about the club. I mean, uh, so it's a whole rock thing? or We, we rock accommodate theme? everybody. You know, like we have uh, merengue, salsa, hip hop, open mic night. Um, we do some stand up comedy acts. We do some runway shows. But predominantly, what we're trying to do is pr to promote the rock and roll scene. Okay. Which, you know, bell bottoms were cool in the 70s and 80s, and they're starting to be cool again. Right. You know, and big glasses are cool again. And right, yeah. I think from the 20 year transition, rock and roll is starting to come back into play. Okay. And Thank I've God. always been a rocker. I'm a biker. Rock out with your cock out, they say. <laughs> rock with your cock, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I'm kidding. Dad, I'm only kidding. <laughs> but, Mom, you love that one. But, well, Mom. <laughs> no, but, uh, um, so, so, I mean, what was, who's the biggest act you've had? You said fuck, by the way. I know. You did. I mean, I'm one, but I'm kidding. Shut on you. <laughs> you just it said still surprises thing. me every time it comes out. <laughs> well, when we repeat this, we'll be surprised again. Yeah. yeah so uh, when, you, when you play for me at the concert venue, you better say. Yeah, multiple times. Multiple. <laughs> just slip it in. Just. Slip. That's what he said. Wait a minute. What? This is going somewhere. <laughs> so dirty. This is going somewhere else. Wow. My boyfriend might not be gay. I'll ever slip it in, um, gay boyfriend. Fuck. Fuck. Rock out with a cock out. out. That was you. What's happening? That was you. I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> just show. slip that. I'm building something big here. This could be. This could be. This could be, be taking a show to a different level here. <laughs> exactly. But. Uh, is there an S&M show on the stage, too? Maybe we can kind of, no. If you build it, they will come. That's right. That's what they say. But, um, so, is there, is there any, what was the biggest performer you've had there? We just recently, I, um, I started build, rebuilt the club about a year ago. Okay. We went through some trials and tribulations, giving, you know, some chances, and we went through some failures. Okay. And now that we started the rock scene, which is only about two months into it, we, it, it's just blossomed. Where we were looking for people, people are coming to us now. Wow. At Arena Queens, New York. On Facebook. Just in case you forgot. Just in the last five minutes, forgot. we're just going <laughs> to. No, so maybe we'll do a show there. Maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe, we'll bring, there maybe we'll bring Ed, our producer. Maybe we'll have you sing, and maybe we'll do a live radio broadcast. By all from the, means, from the we have a full back line. We have a full stage. We have a $100,000. Can we make that happen, system. Ed? Can that happen? I'll bring my band. Can we make that happen? A live show from the club? Yeah. All right. Gonna, maybe we'll make We've that actually happen. filmed three movies there this okay. month alone. Cool. And uh, as we speak now, the gentleman from the last movie I was just in, which was Stories from Astoria. Yeah, we're going to talk about that as well. That they are filming a portion of it at the club as we speak. Wow. So from here, I'm going straight there. And oh you're more than welcome. Well, what crowd already crashed? Oh, I mean, Johnny Black on you. <laughs> but uh, so before we get to that, I know sure. you, you uh, we were talking backstage mm -hmm. uh, about some charity work. Yes. You're doing. Tell us about that. We definitely have been doing toys for tots for 30 plus years and that's to benefit all venues of kids who need help whether it's multiple sclerosis muscular dystrophy any type of anything that they need where they might have been abandoned as a child or they have mental disabilities we do that what about charitable. daddy complexes <laughs> we incur that just too. saying no i'm kidding okay. we um we do breast cancer okay we do 
pretty much any kind of charitable event that helps anybody that needs our help. Because wow. guys like us can group together and with a thousand of us can get ten dollars each. And then sure, we can help. It all adds every thousand or thirty. Every 000. little helps. Every right. little helps. Remember that. You know, maybe we'll later on have a. If you let us know where they can donate and stuff like that. Absolutely, you can always leave any donations at Queens Arena, at, or Arena Queens, New York, or you can reach us on the website, or you can directly go to Toys for Tots. Or you can make a check to Steve Stanulis and. Uh, no, By I'm all means, I'm I'm he gets a, you get twenty uh, percent. She gets right, exactly. and, and you gotta, I make the connection. You make the connection, right? Yeah, exactly. So no, so, so I mean that's awesome. I mean, yeah, we try. Yeah, we all try to promote stuff, and uh, it's all good. Um, everybody here's an artist in their own way, it but it's good always good to give back. Exactly. You know, there's so. kids that we know from. To, I'll be quick about it, but from when we started Toys for Tots many years ago, they were young and they were little, and every year these kids, uh, they're adults now. And they're very mentally handicapped, and, and they love us, and it makes you just want to cry. But you don't want to cry in front of them because you feel so good. And they remember us. Right. When the whole year, they might not see anybody else. Aww. And on Christmas, or well, we do it in October now for the Christmas thing. And these kids wait all year for us. And they're adults. And just for a stuffed animal or a toy yeah. or anything that you could donate or give, whether it's cash or just your time or a hug, it's like the world, man. Absolutely. You know what else? So like many that. people in the world, they wake up every day and they think they got problems. And they don't know what problems are. Right. And some of these kids, I, I feel bad for because some of them don't have a shot even before from the word go. Right. You know, so I mean, it, I think it's so important. Yes. It's, because it's, people think, you know, people, you know, they're in the moment, oh my God, right? I go up this poor kid and then they go home and they forget about the, you know. Right, then it's gone. It's gone. It's forget it's about it. Good. Right. It's almost like. We remember all year round. We take donations all year round and we make sure that they have at the Bernard Finson Association where they have new housing mm -hmm. recently and um, they are well, very well taken care of. And, wow. and uh, it's all due to part of everyone giving in a little bit. And what when is when is the Toys for Tots play? It's usually uh, at the end of October. It used to be the first week of December. Okay. And we, we usually do it around the end of October, around 25th, 26th. Okay. And uh, just because the weather's a little bit easier, we can get a little bit more guys on the bikes to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, a little bit of inner politics and stuff. But we, we, we draw a nice crowd, and every year we, we, we make a lot of money, and we uh, donate a lot of toys, and we make a lot of smiles. How about we do this? How about when we get a little closer, mm -hmm. when Toys for Tots Drive come, we'll do a fundraiser with the radio show. Absolutely. We'll shoot it live. We'll get all of our guests to come and perform. Thank you. And you better say. No, no, absolutely. We'll, we'll get all our performers that from the show By all to means. donate their time uh, and get some money and then help raise money. That would be and a great thing, man. No, no, absolutely. We should definitely, 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 definitely do it. We don't, we don't say anything unless we really mean it. Yeah. So I'm serious. We could maybe even do something pre- I can't do it alone. I could do it with your help and you guys help together. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, so what part. else is happening with the acting? I heard you got, to, I know you mentioned a thing, but what are you, are you acting, acting in it or? I, I don't like to push it as actor yet. Um, I've been doing it for about 12 years. Um, I did it, I got out of it for a little while and I just recently got back into it. Okay. And uh, it, 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 it's easy for me, so it's kind of fun. It's easy for you. It's not like, I don't stress it so much. So it, it, I make it fun. Yeah. So, yeah, which cool. makes it easy. Cool. So, uh, but what inspired you to do this? What inspired you? You know, one day, uh, I don't know, maybe 12, 13 years ago, just in talking, somebody said, hey, man, you have such a look. You should go down to You do have a great look. Place. A totally different look. I mean, you have a great look. Well, thank you. You definitely do. I could do the suit and tie thing. I could do the, the regular regular thing. I, this is me, though. Yeah. This is the, the regular Jimmy the Hook. Mm -hmm. Jimmy, is it Jimmy see. the Hook? Jimmy the Hook. Oh, not Jimmy Hook. Well, Jimmy Hook. In, in, but, uh, Related to Captain? No, it's terrible. Is this thing on? Wow. It's terrible. Wow. 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 That one bombed, huh? But, uh, no, no. So, before we let you go one more time, Jim, sure. just let us know one more time the club, the location, everything about the charity, where we can find you, all that good stuff. Yes. The name of the club is Arena Queens, New York. We are located 80-12 51st Avenue in Elmhurst, Queens at 11373. And... Pretty much that's it. Does, you, does it have a website, the club? Or? We have a website, which is arenaqueens.com. Okay. It is currently being revamped. It should be ready by tomorrow. Uh, we have Facebook, which is arenaqueens at gmail.com. We have Facebook at just Arena Queens New York. And we'll have Jimmy Hook, Facebook. And uh, well, I mean, you, you can't you're find not, me you're, there. You're, you're, you're kidding. Yeah, you're <laughs>
And we're on Yelp Stop just away. as well. Holy, we are on Yelp as well. Holy cow. Cool. Very and, cool. And we are on Reverb Nation. We are on Club Zone and a few other things that my, um, my uh, associates monitor. Cool. Well, I guess. And I'm now I'm here. Now you're here. Stop I'm live with Steve Stanios. Yes. Absolutely. So, but uh, I am definitely serious. Same. I might have to tell you. I'm, I'm about to go to my wallet. That would be very awesome. Believe me, all the money does go Seriously. to the kids. And we're going to do a, we're gonna do a fundraising event. I'm going to get, over the course of time, we'll figure out a date. We'll shoot it live. That would be so I'll great. get 20, 30 of our top performers, whether they're dancers, great. singers, comedians, and we'll raise money. We'll bring awareness. We could do that. It's a big enough venue. We could fit a few hundred people in there. You know, We'll provide food or whatever and make sure everybody's happy. We could even try to bust some of the kids in for the show. That would be amazing. It's always good. You know, Sometimes that's difficult, but... Um, we do the circus with the kids every year, cool. and we get five, six busloads full of the kids from the Bernard Finneson Association, and we take them to uh, uh, Ringland, Barnum and Bailey Ringland. Circus. Ringling Brothers, Ringling that's Brothers. easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> the circus. Awesome, awesome. cool. But, so, um, they yeah. get out and about, and that's another thing that we do for them that, that really, really makes them happy. And cool. those smiles from kids that usually have frowns just makes you want to, it, it's hard not to cry when wow. you're there, but you're just overwhelmed with joy for to do something for somebody so unfortunate. And, uh, cool. Every bit helps. Every bit helps. Well, amazing. We're running out of time. I just wanted to say thank you so much for well, coming. Well, hey, I appreciate you having me on Ladies the show. Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, Jimmy Hook. He'll be back. Okay. We're going to be at his club. We'll much, see you guys. soon. I appreciate your time. Jimmy, thanks. Well, absolutely. It's been a pleasure, man. Pleasure. Thank you for having me on thank the show. Thank you. Anyways,
Welcome back once again to Inside the Life with Steve Stanios. Once again, we had an amazing, amazing show today. We had a lot of great guests, right? Yes, sir, we did. Well, we're going to bring out one more time. Kaylee Rose is going to perform for us one more time, singing her new song, 8th Avenue. Are you ready? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's get up for Kaylee Rose. Jimmy, are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. This is going to be performed in your club at our fun, new fundraiser we just came up with. We look forward to seeing you there. Let's see it? Yeah. One more time, Kaylee Rose. Have a great night and peace. Yes.